Hello guys, it's Caleb Fire 10 here, and today I thought I would share how I emulate my Wii games on my PC and just the controller configuration I use. Just in case some of you guys are curious on like how you might set it up, I just show you how I have it set up and personally it works for me. So I will show you how I have it set up. So when I did it, I set it up so I could have it be the closest feel of a Nintendo Wii controller with the nunchuck. So we can demonstrate this with my chewed up nunchuck from when I was way younger and grew up with this. So I use both a PlayStation controller, but if you wanted to, this configuration also works with an Xbox controller or even a Switch Pro controller. This configuration will work with any of these controllers that you would like to use. But for this demonstration, I will be showing the PlayStation 5 DualShock controller or DualSense, whatever it's called. So, like I've said before, I've gone off of this based off of feel, so some people, like me, hold the controller like this when they're playing the game, which is similar to holding the controller on the right. You have your finger on the analog stick, and then this swaps between the buttons, or sometimes you'll do a claw grip like this, depending on the game. But personally for me, when I'm just casually holding the controller, it's like this. So I have mapped it so that the C-stick is this, and then C and Z are this and this. So these are mapped just like that. Because, And then for the right controller, how I usually hold it is like this, and some people might hold it like the exact same way. So when you're holding the controller, I had it again based off of feel while you're holding it. So your finger would be resting on A, and this would be the B trigger. I have also mapped it so that this is the B also, so both of these are the same button mapped. That way if you wanted to control menus, it feels natural with a PlayStation 4 controller or 5 controller. And then, so, I have A mapped to X, B mapped to circle, and the trigger. And then 1 and 2 are mapped to triangle and X. You can choose whichever one you prefers you prefer better. And then... The home button is the PlayStation button, so home and the PlayStation button. And then start and select is either the share button or the touch control pad. I don't remember, but either one of those works. But if you're used to clicking this for select for PlayStation games, because I know this is the share button, so you don't want to accidentally click that and send something if you're used to that on PlayStation, then you can map this to the select button. It works just fine. And then this one is actually mapped to shaking the controller up and down because I have not physically set up gyro or accelerometer movement. You can do it in Dolphin, but I will not be demonstrating that in this video. So just have it seamless across all of the platforms, depending on if you play it with an Xbox controller, like I've shown here, where that doesn't have gyro, then this can simulate shaking it up and down. If you wanted to simulate gyro, you can and have that be shaking the controller because some Wii games allow you to do that. But for me personally, this works just fine and is actually kind of preferable for games like Mario Kart Wii. So if you do a trick, you can do this instead of shaking the controller or in Mario Galaxy where you can just click this to do your spin attack. But again, each mapping is different for each person. And personally, this mapping works best for all Wii ga for the Wii games that I play. But some Wii games, like Mario Kart Wii, it's easier to just click this. Because I know if you do with the GameCube controller, you have to click up on the D-pad. Oh, that's another thing. The D-pad's also mapped to the D-pad. So if you navigate the menus, you can also use the D-pad instead of using the stick. So everything is mapped except for the power button because in the emulator, it doesn't do much. Now, I will be showing you my controller configuration inside of Dolphin right now. Something else to note, I am not pirating this game. I own the game on disc physically right here. So make sure that if you play your games, you have the game owned physically or digitally through the Wii U eShop. Although I don't think Mario Kart is available on the Wii U eShop. Just make sure you own the game before you start downloading it off the internet or Use your own dump from your own disc. All right. 
Now I'm gonna show you the controller in action right now. So, as I've said, I've mapped this to best feel, but one thing I forgot to mention is that the pointer is actually mapped to the right stick. So, as you can see, I can move this around and the pointer moves as well. And I also have it set up so that it will auto hide when I'm not touching it, so it's not always in your face. So I'm gonna demonstrate this being used right now. I'm gonna go do a ghost race real quick. Yeah. Another thing to you note, know, I also have a texture pack that makes the text and some of the icons for the characters look a bit sharper. So that way when you blow it up onto a big screen it doesn't look all blurry. So anyway, I'm gonna show you this ghost race and show you how my controls work. Something else also to note is that the frame rate and resolution for this is 1080p 60. The original game was also 60 FPS, but I was at a lower resolution of 480. So as you can see, that's the configuration I use, and I was able to do all the things that you can do on a Wii Remote, except for, of course, Gyro. I have not set that up yet. It is possible to set up, but I will not be showing it in this video. So. And again, this also works with all games that you could do. So for Mario Galaxy, this would work too. Your pointer might be a bit slow to collect all the star bits, but you can aim and shoot star bits still. So, For GameCube, I use a different setup, but again, I will not be showing that in this video since the GameCube layout is completely different, but it is mostly similar, but I will show that in the next video. And with that, thank you for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe if you did. If you did, just like if you didn't. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments, and I'll try and get back to you whenever I can.
And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.